If you watched this channel for more than a week, you probably know that I live and breathe electric cars. I spend 60 to 80 hours a week on this channel every day, including weekends, holidays, birthdays, and so forth. Uh, I speak at local and, and national events for electric car community. I run a few online communities for electric car drivers. So electric cars are my life. However, I don't drive a full pure electric car i'm driving a plug-in hybrid right now and as you probably know the reason for that i used to drive a tesla actually had three different teslas over the six year span but now that i moved to sacramento to do this full time and i do no longer make a huge silicon valley i have to live within my means though i have to say and I absolutely love my Chevy Volt. And 99% uh, of the time I use it as a fully electric car because I only drive, you know, 20, 30 miles a day since I work from home and I just have to get occasional Starbucks, play an occasional hockey game and uh, get an occasional Chipotle. So um, I'm a happy uh, camper, uh, but I also recently found out that one of the contributors to this channel, Roger Atkins, uh, has kind of the same situation and it was interesting to talk to him about this because you know i think it projects on the entire community in terms of there are quite a few people who would like to drive a tesla or a full electric car but for for different reasons they're not able to whether financial or uh, the the living situation and so forth so i had a very interesting conversation with him and of course as you know roger is joined by uh, a few other amazing contributors to this channel starting december including um sandy monroe uh, the CEO of Faraday Future, Karsten Breitfeld, uh, Rich Rebuilds, and a few others. So if you have not subscribed to this channel, this would be a great time. So you can see those amazing people on this channel every month. Click on the subscribe button and the bell notification icon so you don't miss any of them moving forward. All right. So my conversation with Roger was, was, was a lot of fun. And we, you know, we kind of addressed quite a few things that I think you guys will be able to relate. And also on top of that, I myself know that a lot of popular Tesla YouTubers um, didn't get their Teslas until they got actually pretty popular and, and were actually afford, be able to afford the Teslas once they were able to make a little bit of extra money on YouTube. And um, probably at least one of your favorite uh, uh, Tesla YouTubers was part of that. And I just thought that, you know, that was interesting, but at the same time, the passion overtakes the financial situation, I think, and we can be passionate about whatever we want to be. I mean, some people love Lamborghinis and they never could afford one. So um, I'm going to play that conversation for you in just a second. Of course, a quick reminder that this video and this channel is sponsored by Byton. Check out their all electric SUV that I am planning on getting. And look how fast and easy it is to reserve one. It takes about 30 seconds of your time, depending how fast you can type. Uh, and mainly because there is no payment form. That's right. It's absolutely free for now to reserve your Byton. So go to the description of this video and reserve this amazing car for yourself today. All right. So without further ado, I'm going to play this interview with Roger. And, uh, you know, we kind of had to, um, I had to make a confession to him first uh, before he has made his confession. And just like any uh, great juicy confession, uh, they, these were done also in bed. I will explain the choice of our uh, film location at the end of this video. Enjoy. Hey, Roger. Well, I have a confession to make. Um, you know, I've been, I've been blogging and talking about electric cars for, you know, many years now. And um, I don't really drive a pure electric car right now. I have a, I have a plug-in hybrid. Man, I wish you'd told me this before. What did you leave it to now for? I've got to tell you something as well, Alex. What is it? Alex, I've got a PHEV. Wow. I wish you would have told me that earlier. Sorry. Well, I think we should, I think we should talk about something here. I think we should talk about why, why we and people in our community and people on television and YouTube talk about electric cars, but don't really drive them. I mean, there are quite a few really amazing electric cars i'm not even talking about tesla I'm talking about you know we got ford now kia hyundai jaguar mercedes so many mm. and yet people talk and talk and talk about it but once they are ready to buy you know at best they'll buy a plug-in hybrid like in my case i bought it because you know i'm just starting this 
YouTube channel and, and, and I can't afford a hundred thousand dollar, you know, Tesla. And, uh, that was, that was the only choice I had at that time. Mm -hmm. Why do you think this is? Well, I mean, I'll give you my kind of side of it. Um, I would love, uh, a Model X, um, yeah, that, that's that's a car I kind of just love so much. Um, an SUV, I, I like the, the EQC, I like the Jaguar I-Pace. And it's getting closer for me, but I need a practical vehicle. I don't call it an SUV, I call it a DUV. DUV? Alex. Yeah. Do you know what that is? No. Dog utility vehicle. Oh. I've got two Hungarian Vizslas, and they have to go in a crate and go in the back of a vehicle. Pretty difficult to put them in a saloon. So it's got to be kind of either what they call a, an estate car or a shooting brake or an SUV because SUV is big with a, you know, big right. rear cabin. Right. Um, and Oh, and also like the Neo ES8 because I took them out for a ride in that recently, actually. They, the Hendrix and Presley, they're called. That's, that's the dogs, I like by that. the way. I like that. Yeah. 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 Not, not the, the pop people. Yeah. Um, yeah. So basically, uh, I need a DUV. And the thing... The, at the moment is that that's really only a plug-in hybrid um that's like under fifty thousand um, pounds now should i spend extra money should i really go and push the boat out and do all of that stuff yeah i guess i should really if i want to really be you know practicing what i preach um but i think i i guess i'm in the same place as, as like loads of people because when you look at the up you know the uptake of, of evs it is only one or two percent so whether you talk about them or you don't talk about them, there's a reason for that. Uh, so it's choice, it's price, it's all of those things. It's not really infrastructure, I don't think, actually. Because the charging thing, you know, my, my vehicle gets charged at home. I have a seven kilowatt charger. I plug it in religious, you know, religious, can't even say it properly, religiously, because I'm keen to always drive electric. So a lot of my journeys are just 10, 20 miles going to the station, taking the dogs out somewhere to the woods. So um, I do, you know, I plug in my vehicle all the time. So it's always got, you know, 20 um, miles, 25 miles range or, or more. But would I like to just be driving around full electric? Yeah, of course I would. Absolutely. And, and I must. I mean, how can I talk like I talk and do what I do if I don't? So I'm sort of glad we've, we do it. I feel quite you know, a weight off my shoulders to be on it. I'm really glad you've made that confession because, yeah, I've made it to myself now. Well, I do have to say, when I bought my Vault, I really thought that that was a, a gateway drug to the general public into the, you know, electrification of cars hmm. because they get, like like you, I only maybe use, I don't know, 3 to 5% of my cars driving when I have to use gas, gas extender, whatever you want to call it. Um, so most people would be the same and when they drive their plug-in hybrids. And I thought, well, you know, I'm I, th this is the way for them to, uh, to experience the el electric car, essentially, but also have a peace of mind saying, I don't have to have a range anxiety and it has this thing that I'm so familiar with, mm. which is the gas engine. <coughs> <coughs> and then the, the next time, uh, the next time they are going to be shopping for the car, next time I'm going to be shopping for the car, they will have a relatively low priced, whether it's new or maybe even used at that time, uh, all electric car with a decent range. And they're like, oh, I'm already familiar with it. As a matter of fact, I don't even use that gas thing anymore really that much. And now I'm going to have triple of the range that I have now. Pff, it's going to be plenty. Um, but the problem is they've discontinued the only good plug-in hybrid I thought there was out there. Um, and I feel quite silly, but um, do you think your next car is going to be uh, all electric? It's got to be. Um, I've got uh, a Mitsubishi Outlander plug-in hybrid, and uh, I had it on a lease. The lease came up recently, so I, I paid it off, and so I own it now as my car. Uh, and when I did that, I thought, right, this has to be the last time I ever have a car like this. The next one has got to be electric. Can I tell you something else I do, Alex? I've got another confession. All right, let's, let's, let's okay. get it all out. Right. So I don't fill it up very often now because I mostly drive an electric. But when I do, do you know what I do, Alex? What? I set my alarm clock for 2 o'clock in the morning and I get up and I get in the car and I drive to the petrol station and I fill it up with petrol when no one's looking. <laughs> <laughs> I do. Wow. Yeah, wow, because I feel ashamed. 
I do have to say that when I go to a gas station, I'm like, I hope nobody who watches my channel sees me exactly. do this. Because, oh my God, this is such a such a dirty deed. Like, literally, like, yeah. I'm smelling the gasoline. And I'm yeah. like, but at the same time, I'm thinking like, hey, listen, but at the same time, I'm able to do more videos and and and, and promote the, the, the electric cars more because, you know, I, I think I do more good than, you know, whatever two gallons of gas that I use every every month but um how do you think you know if we are even we're the biggest fans i would say of this and along with a few others if we're having a hard time you know just getting into all electric cars um what does it have to happen and do you think it started happening where you know the everybody else who doesn't care necessarily about the environment or you know where we get oil and how and all that stuff what do you think um they will start turning around and has it happened? Like, has, do you think the turning point has happened already? Can I sleep on that? I think we should sleep on that. All right. Uh, I think this is uh, the most pillow talk we've done here on this channel in over three years, but I think it was worth it. Uh, now, <laughs> let me explain how this can actually uh, came along. Um, as you know, with some of these uh, contributors, uh, they are very busy and I don't get to see a lot of them, uh, uh, them uh, you know, in person. And uh, Roger lives in uh, London. And so we decided, you know, we're just going to tape a couple of segments uh, while we was here at the LA Auto Show. You know, these topics are, you know, they can last for a few months they they're not going to be outdated so um, we decided to go to uh, you know the hotel where he was staying they had a beautiful lobby but they had this huge wedding going on there and everything was really loud so we're like okay you know what let's just go to his room regroup and maybe just film there so we're like, okay, uh, but his room was relatively small. So there was just a really nice setup, you know, of two chairs. I'm sure you've seen that video. Then uh, there was this beautiful view with the balcony. So we filmed it then there and we're like, well, let's film one more video because I don't know when I'm going to see him again. And I'd rather do this videos in person. So the only other <laughs> part of the room uh, was his bed. And we were like, you know what? Let's do it. Why not? And uh, we'll make it as awkward as possible for everybody. But it's going to be fun. So I hope we delivered on that. Let me know in the comment section if you enjoyed it. But also let me know, you know, this is a kind of a serious conversation. And I really do think that uh, plug-in hybrids uh, are kind of a gateway drugs into to the electric car uh, community. But unfortunately, you know, Chevy Volt, I always thought was uh, the best one. I'm not really big on the plug-in hybrids that either uh, are not able to only run on electricity uh, or just have like a 10 or a 12 mile range. So I'm really kind of, uh, I'm really sad that uh, Chevy Volt has been discontinued, but I'm glad that the, it, it, it was a huge success and a lot of people have decided to move on from the Chevy Volt to Chevy Bolt and other electric cars. By the way, as I travel and meet people like Roger, if you guys are interested in checking out what's going on behind the scenes, uh, don't forget to uh, follow me on Instagram after uh, under E4 Electric. As a matter of fact, I mean, under, I'm under that handle everywhere, including TikTok by the way. And of course, if you're watching me on YouTube, don't forget to subscribe to this channel so you can see more of the pillow talk segments that we do here, not very regularly. And of course, uh, don't forget to hit the bell notification icon so you don't miss anything moving forward. All right, I am looking forward to your comments and of course, many, many cheap jokes. Uh, other than that, uh, see you guys next time and remember to stay charged.